these nasty looking things. All right, so I figure it might be fun to do a little uh, compa size comparison here. Um, obviously, visually, you can see it's wider but shorter. Um, however, it is thicker, which you can't see from this angle. Um, but I figure out, we do some measurements, and I'll do, do the math on the screen or whatever. Um, I don't know if cooling volume is a thing. Uh, but maybe we can just calculate the overall volume of the finned areas. Kind of give us an idea of uh, how much cooling capacity it has. Again, I don't know if those are the right terms. All right, so let's see here. So let's go stock first. So on the stock width, we're looking at 15 inches. Height, looking at roughly, uh, super awkward. Just call that, just call that 17 for easiness. All right. And then thickness, we're looking at, just call it a two and a half for easiness. All right, let's go back to the full race. All right, so width from the weld to the weld 21 and a half height looking at I mean it's 12 and a quarter on the dot but we just say 12 and height we're looking at almost so let's round up on this one, we round down the last one. Looking at four inches here. All right, so I'll do the math here. I'd be curious to see how those uh, volumes compare. So looking at the numbers, um, we see there's a pretty big difference between the full race and the stock intercooler in terms of volume. So I will say that like, I don't think that's the end all be all of measurements, but I think it is uh, representative of like the the performance improvements. So if you do the math, um, the full race is 35% larger than the uh, stock intercooler. Um, but I don't think it. I also don't think it ends there. So if you go to their website, um, full race makes a lot of claims about how it improves uh, performance in different ways. So um, just right off the bat, they say that compared to other um, intercoolers that don't have um, internal flow dividers, that they're gonna have a 21% improvement in pressure drop. So that's that's interesting. Obviously, you wanna maintain as much pressure as you can throughout the, uh, the inner cooler. Um, looking at a little bit further down their page, they say that uh, their cast aluminum end tanks are gonna resist heat soak a lot more than the uh, plastic stock ones. Obviously, that it would be beneficial. Um, I'd be interested to see how that works when um, using it on a daily basis. Towards the end of the page, they make a couple more claims. They say that their inner cooler has 70% more internal flow area than stock. So to me, that means if you were to split it in half, um, as you as you look at it from the front of the truck, that you know you'd have 70% more of a cross-sectional area for that charged air to flow through. So they accomplish this by using um, 10 millimeter charge air paths, if you will, so the thickness of those gaps are 10 millimeters. And additionally, their ambient air paths are also 10 millimeters, so that's gonna allow that air to cool really effectively. They say that the uh, stock size is only six and a half, so you almost have double the uh, thickness or the double the gap that that air can travel through both the charge side and the ambient side. And I, I really think that's gonna help you with performance the most. It's gonna help you keep those inlet air temperatures down the most as a put, you know, in comparison to stock. They also say that um, they have less than 1% pressure, one PSI pressure drop at 600 horsepower. Obviously you wanna keep your, you know, pressure up as much as possible, that's kind of the point. Additionally, um, they say that the intercooler overall has 
over a thousand uh, cubic feet per minute flow rate. So I'm really curious to see how this all uh, does on the street or on the trail. So we'll have to see. Um, I'll, I'll do probably a month or two of driving before I do a full review and let you guys know how it performs. So if you have any questions about the comparison or just anything in general, let me know. Thanks.